So hi everybody and welcome back to the Bitcoin Day Trader channel. And today I'm going to teach you guys how to use the token file. It's kind of an advanced tutorial. It is necessary that you have installed BTC Recover the right way and uh, that you have a little bit of experience with BTC Recover. I received a lot of questions about the token file. If you do things wrong in the token file, the amount of passwords that it's going to create gets exponentially bigger. So today's video I'm going to teach you guys how to build a good token file and I'm going to teach you guys how to make the commands a little bit easier in command prompt. Let's just start. I have created a couple of wallets and today we're gonna use the wallet.eas.json. Uh, it has a special password. Uh, password is bitcoin227p exclamation point and we're gonna try and brute force it using a token file. Let's just start by making BTC Recover a little bit more easy to use. First, let's go to the BTC Recover folder. So change directory to c double dot slash BTC Recover Master. Enter. And now we're in the same directory. What I taught you guys in the tutorials before was that you had to start BTC Recover by typing c double dot slash python27 slash python space btc recover dot pi help. To make it a little bit easier, we would like to use only the command python, so like this. But this is probably not gonna work now. No, Python is not working now because we did not set it up in our system environments in the variable name path. What that does is preload the folder of Python. So it's preloading the c double dot slash python27. So we can do that right now. So you need to go to your configuration screen, the control panel items. You gotta go to system, advanced system settings. And here you see environmental variables. And here in system variables, you gotta search for path. Path. Here's path. You gotta edit it. You gotta add the directory of Python 2.7. Make a new one and say c double dot slash Python 2.7 slash. In your C drive, we have installed Python 2.7 here. It's automatically gonna load this folder when starting command prompt. What we don't have to do this time is c double dot slash Python 2.7 before Python. So that's a little bit easier. It's kind of like on the Mac. For you guys that don't use Windows 10, the value of the variables looks something like you see here in the screen right now. The thing you have to do then is edit it and then you see the same line. At the end of the line you gotta put a semicolon. That's the dot comma to end the previous variable and then add c double dot slash python. You see, you have the semicolon here and then c double dot slash python27 slash scripts. The reason why I did scripts too was to make the pip installs easier. So you can just write pip install. And then we press OK, oh here OK, and OK. Now it's still not gonna work, as you see, because we need to reboot the command prompt window. Reboot your command prompt window, change directory. Now, when we write python space btc recover the pi double dash help, it's gonna run. Okay, so that made it a little bit easier. It made the command line a lot shorter. I've already created a token.txt. As you see here, I've already made some comments. Once we run this token in BTC Recover, it will ignore everything that is written behind a, what's that sign? I think I call it a hashtag, I don't know. Let's just read what, what I wrote down. To automatically load a token list, save it as BTC Recover token auto.txt. So that's what we can do next. But first let's check if it's working. So let's write Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Save it, get our previous command and let's add the token list token.txt let's show us list pass show us the password so we have one password here bitcoin it is working as you see now if we write something more like day save it rerun the program we see four combinations you see we have one token two tokens four combinations bit day day bit if we add another token let's divide bit and coin save it check this now it's 15 combinations. So you see it's exponentially growing. And then let's add trader, save it. So now we have four tokens and we have 64. But let's add another word, light, save. Yo, now it's 325. Let's add save. Now we have 1900. You see how it's getting bigger every time you add another token? So if you have a huge list of tokens, it's gonna be very hard for BTC Recover to recover your password. Let's go back. The first thing we can do is to automatically load a token file, save it as BTC Recover token auto. Let's just put Bitcoin back, save it, close it, rename it as BTC Recover tokens auto. And now we can remove this part, the token list token. 
and now it would run too. You see? Bitcoin. So it automatically loads the BTC Recover dash token dash auto.txt. Let's reopen our token. We can add command lines in the token by writing hashtag double dash on the first line. The commands are the commands that you can find in the BTC Recover dot help list. All these commands. The token list, the typos, the location of the wallet of course. Maybe you had typos just in case that small letters are supposed to be big letters or, or for instance if you where did I see it here the Android pin when you have when you're searching for the pin code of the Android wallet you have to add this argument so let's try it out let's make a new line hashtag double dash yeah let's just try a wallet out I showed you guys that I have the wallets in this folder wallets and then it's called wallet AES JSON the way we can put that in our token is say wallet space wallets the name of the folder backslash wallet dot AES dot JSON that's the blockchain wallet let's save it let's go back here rerun the program without listing passwords because you cannot use list pass and wallets at the same time it's either using the passwords from the token list on a wallet or just show them with list pass so let's press enter and as you see it is working it figured out wallet as you see here read additional options from the token list file that makes it a lot easier let's just go back to listing passwords let's make this a comment and let's add list pass if you want to use a space in your token for instance you have written down 39 like this it's not gonna work as a space now because when we use a space a space between tokens means or so it's either Bitcoin or 39 if you save it run it again it's gonna show Bitcoin or 39 you see Bitcoin 39 if we want a space you have to write these is this gonna work yeah you see the wildcard for space I uh, hear a single space wildcard s is a single space these are other wildcards so for the dollar sign you use wildcard big s for the percentage sign you use wildcard percentage the same principle applies for this sign here the triangle sign because the triangle sign has a definition in bitch recover too if we use a plus sign it means only try the passwords with the following token in it's always gonna use a token that's next to the plus sign now let's not put a plus sign first so you can see the difference let's just use bitcoin the trader without the space let's say light uh, so now it's gonna use either bit or light but never bit and light together let's save this one and check what it's gonna show us so as you see here it starts with bit or light bitcoin coin light litecoin it's never gonna use bit and light together but there are times that it's gonna use, for instance, coin day and trader without bit or light. Coin day here, coin day trader, coin trader day. These are passwords that did not use bit or light. Now we have created 113 possibilities. If you're sure that it's either bit or light, but one of two is in the password, you put a plus in front of it. So let's save it and let's rerun this token. So as you see, we removed 15 different possibilities and now within every token is always the word bit or light the same principle would apply if we would say for instance we know that it has coin to another plus space save it rerun the program and we've eliminated a lot of possibilities again so there's always Bitcoin or Litecoin in the password now that's pretty important to know let's continue the triangle sign in front of a token means only try the following token at the begin of the password let's say we're pretty sure that bit and light are not supposed to be at the end of the password we know that it's at the beginning so we give it this sign in front of it this little roofy sign <laughs> roofies and rerun it wow we've eliminated a lot of possibilities because now it's only gonna try with bit or light at the beginning as you see so that's what this triangle sign means so what else do we have we can use digits let's remove this day trader we know that it's either bit or litecoin and we are pretty sure that coin is always supposed to be at the first place after bit we can say it has a relative position that's what the r means it's the first position so then try r2 that means always after the r1 and r1 is always after the triangle let's try the wild card for digits so let's use one digit wild card digit save it and rerun it okay so we've used one digit and as you see we have bitcoin we have litecoin and then we got bitcoin with the digits and then litecoin with the digits and if we want to use two digits we can do that as well so we can write two digits save it and now it used two digits but be aware that it uses two digits not one if you want to use one and two digits we can do that too by writing one comma two digits and let's just 
for the sake of it, remove light here so that the list is getting a little bit smaller. We run it and as you see now, it has used one digit here and then two digits here. And two digits are a lot of numbers. You see that's 100 numbers. One digit is 10 numbers. So every time you add another option of digits, it's going to make 10 times as much passwords. So as you see here, 111 and let's just try with one digit, that would be 11 different passwords divided by 10 11 passwords you see you can imagine if we use three digits just enter use three digits all of a sudden we had 1001 password combines what if we don't know if it's just one two or three digits it's even a little bit more you see 1111 so that's how you use digits and we know that we have a relative position R2. Uh, we can say for instance it's either bit or bit and let's say always use this at a relative position whatever five. As you see here I have used the relative position number five. Five is higher than two and one so it's always gonna be after what's in relative position two and one so we're gonna see the exclamation point always at the end of the password. Press enter. We have Bitcoin with the capital B and without a capital B. And we have the digits and we have it all on relative places. So I knew that the password had three digits, but I'm not quite sure. So I can say one or three digits. I know it has an exclamation point at the end and there was something in between here. I don't know exactly what it was. R3, that's higher than two. We can place there another wildcard. These are the interesting wildcards. As you see here, we have wildcard Y. Let's just show them all what they mean. So I'm gonna hide these. Now it's all comments. And let's just check the wildcards out. So wildcard A, just enter. Rerun. So this is all that is in wildcard A. It's one of the 26 letters of our alphabet. And if we use a capital A, it's gonna use capital letters. You see, that's what this means. If you use the wildcard one, two, three, I, N, then it's gonna use one, two or three digits or a letter and with capitals. So let's just check it out, but not gonna use one, two, three, but just one. Let's write down one, I, N. Save it, rerun. So as you see here, we have the capital less letters. I don't know how to call it, the small letters. We have the big letters here. And after the letters, the digits. That's a combination of the wildcard D, wildcard A, and wildcard B, A. And if we say one, two, three, let's just try it. One, two, three, let's rerun it. And that's a lot, you see? Now it's trying every letter with every number. And as you see, it got out of hand quite fast because we're only at letter G, I, J, K, L, M, N. So imagine you trying this with even more characters. 224,000 password combinations, so that's a lot. And one was, let's rerun it just for fun. 62, two will be 62 times 62 and that's 3,844. And then that times 62 will be that 200,000. So it gets out of hand pretty quick. Okay, another wildcard. Let's try the symbols wildcard. That's the wildcard Y. We run it. This is all that you can find within the wildcard Y. So it's all the symbols. Yeah, so we can use, for instance, the wildcard Y on the location where we have the exclamation point, but it would make it 32 times slower. So it's not smart to do that. There has to be something in between because I know there is a letter in between, but I can't remember which one. First check how long this is gonna take us. I think it's gonna take us a while if we would try this on a wallet. So let's just, instead of listing the password, let's just try it on a wallet. So let's cut this, paste it here, save it. And let's run it on our wallet. Probably gonna have to exit the program because it's probably gonna take a while. Oh, it's not even that long. So it did try it. As you can see here, reading additional options from the token list, the wallet AES JSON. It's warning us that we have zero password characters. It's telling us that we that we didn't set a token here at this place. That would be a wildcard for a letter. That would be IN. It's one IN. It's one letter or number. I'm not sure. We have one, two, three digits and an exclamation point at the end. I think that this token is complete now. I think that this token will brute force it. So let's try it out. So we have our wallet here, that there, so that it knows that it's a comment and that it's not supposed to work with this. Let's try it out. Wow. You see the difference when I added the wildcard IN and the any letter or any digit. So that was 62 times 
uh, it, it, it would take you 62 times as long. But as a matter of fact, we're already done. I don't know if you can see it, but it did find the password. Woo! Nice. We did it again. So as you guys see, we did it again. We've used some wild cards and some techniques to make it a little bit easier for ourselves in the token part of BTC Recover. We did manage to get our password back. It took the computer only one minute to guess it, but that's of course because we set up the token file the right way. If we wouldn't add all these extras to the token file, it would take a little bit longer because it, it would try to combine all the tokens together and now we already told the right locations for the tokens. So we did it again, man. We've created a nice token.txt file. I hope you guys learned something new about the token file and about how to use the token file. If you did enjoy this tutorial, let me know by giving it a like. A thumbs up if you're new to my channel it would be awesome if you would subscribe to my channel to let me know that you enjoy my videos and I make these videos every once in a while so that's what you get back from subscribing you get a present every once in a while you get a new video I want to thank you all for watching see you guys next time I don't know if you guys see it but I have a new light and it's around my lens so let me just take it off Ain't that cool?